Hello guys! Today I will show you 10 useful 3ds Max scripts you can use daily. Best place to find these scripts and many others is scriptspot.com. That's where I get most of my scripts. Let's start with the script I use the most often – copy and paste. Let me show you how it works. So you need to select the objects you want to copy to another scene and click the icon. After the files are saved, you can paste them to another scene you have opened. I use this script almost every time I work on a project. And I cannot imagine working in Max without it. Also, if you want to get the copy and paste script, download it from our website. The link will be in the description below the video. The next one is pretty similar, but in this case, you can copy and paste objects globally. What does it mean? You can copy the objects onto one computer. They are saved somewhere on the network that is accessible to different computers. We can go to another computer that can access the same network and you are able to paste it to this computer. Magic, isn't it? It is super useful when a couple of people work on the same project. By the way, if you want to learn how to create custom toolbar like this, you can watch my video on this topic. I put the link in the corner. This script is pretty handy as well. We can attach multiple objects at once. Let me show you. Let's say we want to have these beer glasses attached all together. What we need to do is select all the objects we want to attach and choose the script. With this one, we can attach objects to editable poly or to editable mesh. I will use the editable poly option in this case, but it works exactly the same. Just the output varies. That's it. Attach is done. So instead of attaching them one by one or looking for objects from the list, we can easily attach multiple objects with just one click. By the way, with this script, the attached object will be also added to the active layer. The next one is helpful when working on the camera and composition. We'll get a panel where we can choose from different composition rules. It is a perfect way to make sure that your composition is balanced and well planned. The grind lines will appear in the active view. There is also an option to create a custom grid. We can set a specific number of horizontal and vertical guide lines. I share this script on my site as it's hard to find online. I put the link in a corner. This script is pretty easy and really makes working on projects fast. Normally, to measure things in 3ds Max, the quickest way is to draw a plane and check its dimensions. But with this script, we can do quick and rough measurements even faster. We only need to click on the icon and choose the start and end point of the measured object. And we have a distance. It may work great, for example, if we want to check the scale of the scene. Another script that can make your life easier is the speedometer. Thanks to this, you can measure the speed of the animated object to make it look realistic. You need to click on the animated object and turn on the script. You will get the speed in the units you will choose. It will of course vary depending on the frame you will measure the speed. So as an example, at this point the car is driving 37.1 miles per hour. Or if we change the units, it is almost 60 km per hour. This one I use when I work with wire color render element. As an example, here we have one big bluish spot. It's not really helpful if we want to use it in the post later on. Instead of going to specific objects and changing their color one by one, we can do this automatically. We have a couple of options here. We can randomize wire color by layer, by material, or get random colors for each object. Typically, I use the last one. We need to reset the rendering though. Here we go! Now we have various colors on different things. Perfect! Now, in case we need to use it in the post, we can easily select an object. Now I will show you a cool script for pivots. Normally, to move the pivot to another place, we can go to Kairaki, Pivot, and choose the Affect Pivot only. However, I use the script that moves the pivot to the place we select on this cube. So, for example, let's say we want to have the pivot in the center on the top. Or at the bottom. Nice and easy. And so helpful. I have also the most common pivot position setup. 
This way, I can quickly change the pivot place to be at the bottom, in the center. This one I use the most often. This one is pretty helpful during modeling. For example, let's say that I want to model the top here. I need to use the blueprint if I want to model something specific. I can use the reference planes for this. We need to drag and drop the image we want to use, and it will appear in the scene in the correct proportions. We can adjust the scale and material that is applied to it. This one is pretty useful when we want to make the existing objects instances. At this moment, you can notice that only some of the armchairs are instances. If they are all the same and have the same material on them, it makes sense to have all of them as instances, so we need to change things just in one object and it will affect others as well. So we can pick the master object that we want to have as an original one and then select all other files we want to be instances. Here we go, super handy one. With this script, you can randomize the position, rotation and scale of the selected objects. As I mentioned, we can randomize the object's position, rotation and scale. Let me show you some examples of using this script. We can, for instance, move them randomly only on the X and Y axis. We can set the numbers here, let's say from 0 to 1, and click Go Random. We can also rotate. In this case, it makes sense to rotate only on the Z axis. We can set the rotation to 50, for instance. Go Random. Here we go. We use the same model, but it's not visible at the first glance. To make the randomization to a higher level, we can additionally use scale. I would select all the axes and this time I will set the first value to 90 and the second to 110. This way, some of the models will be smaller than the original and some bigger. Perhaps the difference is not enough. We can change the value to 130 and click Go Random again. Here we go. Pretty handy. Also, you can randomize only in the z-axis. It can be pretty handy when you want to randomize trees, for example. Let me show you. We need to select the objects and choose the script. Here we go. The randomization is done automatically. I can make it easier for you to see. I show you this from the top view. If you want to know how to optimize your time in 3ds Max, get our custom toolbar with icons and more, join our optimization training. Also, if you are interested in speeding out the workflow, watch other videos on this topic. Bye-bye!